What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to show you how I'm using Plex, a TV, and movie poster software to get that theater-like experience. Alright, so if you're a subscriber to my channel then you've probably seen my home theater walkthrough and you've seen outside my theater, right outside my theater, I have a TV mounted on the wall. And this TV allows me to show what's actually playing inside of my theater via Plex. So I wanted to make a video and show you how I'm actually doing that. Now we've all been to a movie theater and have had that movie theater experience. And part of that theater experience is when you go to a cinema and right outside of the theater that you're going to be watching your movie on, they always have a display and it's either mounted on, you know, on top or on the side of the door and it shows you now playing. So if you're watching, if you're going to be watching Avengers, they'll have a TV outside that says now playing Avengers. It has the start time. It has the end time. So that's what I'm doing with my TV and Plex. And it just gives you that authentic theater like feeling. And this is a really cool feature that you can probably set up yourself. You probably already have the components that you need. All you really need is a computer and a spare monitor or TV. Now I realize most people aren't probably going to want to mount a TV outside of their theater, but you can also put it inside of your theater. So if you have a spare TV lying around or even if you want to go and buy an additional monitor or TV, you can mount it either inside or outside or you can put it basically wherever you want. But I'm going to show you how you can set this up on your computer and a very cost effective way if you don't want to hook your TV up to your computer or if you don't want to hook your computer up to your TV that's going to be in the hallway or outside of your theater because that's just not going to look very aesthetic. It's going to be probably big and bulky. So I'm going to show you an alternative that you can do that will still get you that theater like experience. All right, so I'm outside of my theater. I still have some work that I need to do, but I'm getting to that eventually. But I wanted to show you my TV and how I have everything set up that I'm using for movie poster. So this TV is nothing fancy. I've never even heard of this company. Curtis, someone gave this TV to me and I figured I would just use it. Nothing fancy. It's not a smart TV. In fact, I think it's really, really old. It even has a disc tray in here. You can put a DVD in here. It doesn't work. But just to show you, you don't have to use anything fancy. Eventually, I am going to upgrade it because it is lacking in some features, but I really don't need to, especially not right now. So I just want to show you how I'm using this setup. So I have it mounted, and I bought a monitor mount because most TV mounts, you can only use them horizontally. You can't use them in portrait mode, and movie poster has to be used in portrait mode. It does have an option for landscape, but it's going to look weird. You know, if you've been to a theater and you've seen the monitors or TVs that they have outside of the theater, it's usually always in poster in portrait mode. So I, I wanted to mount it here, but there's no stud there. So I had to mount it as close as I could. Maybe in the future I'll try to figure out something else to where I can put it a little bit closer because Sometimes people do bump into this, I bump into this, and my hallway is not that wide. But I have it mounted on a stud here. And then behind here, I have the cord running down the wall, and I have some cable management because I didn't want the cord to just be loose and, you know, doesn't look good. I still have some more, a little bit of cord at the bottom that I need to fix, conceal. But for the most part, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to turn this on right now to show you. Now, movie poster works on a computer, laptop, desktop. I think you can use a Raspberry Pi, but it may take a little bit more effort to get that to work. But you can use it. It, it runs on your computer. Now, obviously, I don't have a computer in my hallway. I had thought about maybe using a laptop and mounting it behind here, but that was just too cumbersome, too much trouble, laptops are too big, and 
I didn't want to have a computer or anything in the hallway. It's just not going to look good. It's not feasible. And, you know, it's going to be big and bulky. So how am I actually getting movie poster onto this monitor if my computer is not hooked up to the TV? And it's about 20, 30 feet away from this action monitor. But as you can see, I have a Chromecast hooked up to the back of this. You can't see it, but I'll take a picture of it so you can see it. And I have a Chromecast and I'm using the USB power on the TV to power that so that I didn't have to run another cord down and, you know, I didn't have to worry about all that. So what I'm actually doing, and I'll talk about this later when, I, when we go to the computer, but what I'm actually doing is I have the movie poster software on the computer. I have it maximized to where it fills up the screen, and then I go to the internet, Chrome, Google Chrome. I'm using that, and I'm casting my desktop to the Chromecast. So very cost effective. Now you can buy a HDMI stick or you know a Windows HDMI stick and plug it into the back of here. I thought about doing that, but I really couldn't justify spending $150 because that's the cheapest that I saw. I really couldn't justify spending $150 just to use this program. If you have the money and you want to do that, do it. But Chromecasts are pretty cheap. And I don't remember how much they are. I want to say they're like around 30, 40 bucks. Someone actually gave me a brand new Chromecast as well. So, but Chromecasts aren't that expensive and it saves you a lot of space and it saves you a lot of money. So this is a very cost effective way that you can, you know, get movie poster onto a TV outside of your theater or inside of a theater if you don't want to hook up a computer or a laptop directly to your monitor or TV. So um, it's not very pretty back here. I need to do a little bit more better cable management, but nobody ever really sees it. Nobody ever really comments on it. It's behind it. I do have some twisty ties that I have all the cords, the cables, you know, to make it look decent and neat. But that's how I have it set up. So let's head over to the computer and I can get you started up. All right, so what we're gonna do, obviously first we need to download the movie poster software. So open up your web browser and type in movie poster software. Now when you, when you hit search, it's gonna pull up a bunch of different results on movie posters. I mean, it's gonna pull up all kinds of different movie, po like actual movie poster stuff. So it can be a little bit hard to find. I even had trouble finding it just to make this video. But I'll include the link in the description and that way you'll just click on the link and it'll take you straight to the download page. But once you search it, we're gonna select this one, movie poster digital poster display software. So. I've already clicked on it and it's going to take you here and again I'll include the link in the description. So we're going to click on the download tab at the top here and so you can try to download this movie poster version. I've never had success with that one. Same thing with my cousin, he downloaded it and for whatever reason it didn't work. I had to download the developer build and then I could get it to work. So you may have to may have to download the developer download. So we're going to hit download on the first one, the most recent one, April 3rd, 2020. We're going to hit download and I think it's going to download as a zip file. Yeah. So you're going to have to unzip it. So we're going to hit okay. And for whatever reason file not found. So yeah. It's going to say it's a security risk, I think because it's not like a widely known software. And so it, so it, you know, if you have some type of, you know, security software or malware software, it may not know what to do with it because it's not, it's not a widely known, you know, software. So it may tell you that it's a security risk. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. But for those of you that do, I've downloaded it, it works. I've never had a problem with it. So 
you can just hit, hit allow download and it'll download. So once it downloads, you'll have to unzip it. And, you know, pretty much everybody who's watching this video knows how to do this stuff. So I'm not going to sit here and show you how to unzip something. You can look it up if you don't know how to do that, but I'm pretty sure everybody knows how to do it. So download the software and then we'll come back. Okay, so once you've downloaded the software, I like to pin everything to my taskbar so I don't have to keep going to the start button, or search, whatever. So we're going to click on the movie poster software and it's going to open up. Now mine's going to look a little bit different because I've already changed some of the settings and stuff in here. Yours is going to look pretty much the same, but it probably is going to say like Great Dane Cinema. That's just what the guy who created it called it. Um, so right now it's in portrait mode. But I have my monitor in landscape mode so that I can work and do everything else that I need to do. So, but if you if you right click on this and hit settings, then you know the settings pulls up in landscape mode like it's supposed to. So you can do all kinds of stuff in here. We're mainly going to be working in the plugin options because that's how we're going to connect Plex to the movie poster software. But you can change the appearance, you can add the pictures, whatever you know, pictures that you want to display on here on the actual program. And a lot of this stuff is pretty self-explanatory. I don't really need to dig deep into that. I know that everybody watching this has experience with computers, software. You can figure a lot of this stuff out. There's a couple of things that I will show you that you may not know how to do, but everything else, you can just go in here and just play around with it. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so we're going to work in this plugins options because this is what we need to configure. So you're going to see a couple of tabs when you click on here. And let me mute this. Okay, so you're going to see a couple of tabs. You're going to see one that says manual now playing. And that's something that you can actually configure. You're going to see Plex and then XBMC and you may see MB. Now mine looks different because I've added multiple tabs. I had to manually configure that and I'll show you how to do that and why you would maybe want to do that. But here is where you're going to set the priority of each tab. Okay, but first, let's configure Plex. So yours is probably going to only show one Plex tab. So disregard these right here for right now. So we're going to click on Plex, and you need to make sure that you select Active here. Because if you don't select Active, it's going to completely disregard this tab. So we're going to select Plex, and you can set the priority. You can go ahead and set it to, to 1 for now. I have mine set to 2, but and I'll explain that later. But you can go ahead and set yours to 1. Next, we need to find our server address for our computer. And then we need to find the port that Plex uses. If you don't know how to find that, it's very easy. Go to Plex. and So go to your Plex on your web browser, click settings, and then go to remote access. And then here, mine's gonna be blocked out. Obviously, you don't need to see my IP address. But yours is gonna be, you know, 1.90 or 192.168. You know, 50.88 or whatever. I don't know. And then it's going to be your port number. It's going to be 32400 unless you've changed this. So this is going to be where you find your IP address and the port number that you need to enter. So we're going to come back to the movie poster app. And here you're going to enter in that IP address that's right here. And then you're going to put in the server port right here okay 
Next, we need to tell the movie poster software which device we want it to pull from. Now, you may have multiple devices in your home, and most people will probably only need one device for this movie poster. But like for me in my theater, I have an NVIDIA Shield TV, I have an Apple TV, and I have an Xbox Series X. Well, if I'm watching either one of those, I want movie poster software to pull from one of those. And it's only going to pull from one at a time. And that's where you set your priority. So I mainly use my NVIDIA Shield. So I have that set higher so that if for whatever reason, maybe I'm using two, I'm, I'm streaming something from Plex on two devices at the same time, I can set the priority to say, okay, you know, movie poster will see he's watching, you know, Avengers on his NVIDIA Shield TV, but he's also watching, you know, Agents of Shield on his Xbox. He has his priority set to NVIDIA Shield, so I'm going to pull it from that one. If I stop my NVIDIA Shield, it's going to go to the next device in, in order. So then it'll go to my, you know, my Xbox or whatever, however I have set it up. And again, so you can see here, manual playing, I have a priority set to one. I believe it's like this anyway, so I just left it. And then I have my NVIDIA Shield set to two, priority two. This is my Apple TV, I believe. This is my Xbox. Yes, so that's my Xbox, and then this is my Roku. Okay, so we need to find the device ID that we want to want it to pull from. Now to do that, go back to Plex. Let me minimize this. Go back to Plex, and then under your settings, we are going to go to, where is it at? So here, you're going to go to authorized devices. This is going to show you any device that has accessed your Plex server, whether it's you locally or someone remote, remotely, and whatever it's named is going to show up here. So I want this to pull from my NVIDIA Shield TV. So here's my NVIDIA Shield TV. Now, whatever this is named, if it's just named NVIDIA Shield, you need to copy this. So it'll tell you, okay, this is an NVIDIA Shield Android TV. This is my Apple TV, and I've named it different things. So whatever you name your device, if you change it, it's going to show up in Plex. So I have my NVIDIA Shield TV, and it's called Ant Shield Android TV. So you need to copy that, and then you need to come back here, and under Device ID to Watch, you need to paste that. It needs to be exactly as it is in Plex, because Plex is going to look at that. Okay, so you're going to hit Paste. And then you're going to hit use library and then you can hit test connection when you hit test connection it'll take a few minutes and it'll say connection you know is successful or whatever if it's not then you did something wrong so it's actually pretty simple so I'm not gonna hit test connection right now you can do that so then we're gonna hit save okay so I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit cancel because I didn't change anything but just to make sure that I don't mess anything up. So we're going to hit cancel, or you're, you're going to hit save, I'm going to hit cancel, okay? Now, if you, oops, my mouse moved. So, if we go back in, make sure settings, go back to plugin options and make sure everything stayed the same, okay? And you know what, I'm actually going to hit test connection just to, so you can see. So it says connection test, and progress and we're gonna wait to see what that says okay so a box came up that says success connected haterate cowboy cinema nothing is playing on shield Android TV nothing is playing or shield Android TV was not found on your Plex media server so I don't have anything currently playing on my Shield TV right now. So that's why it's saying that. If there was something playing, then it will show up here. 
Oops. It'll show up here and I can do that. Okay, so if if you do have multiple devices that you want movie poster to also pull from, you have to go into the software. There's a folder in the software that you have to go to and you have to edit. Now, depending on where you save it, the file is going to be different from where I have mine. I saved mine to the desktop. So I'm going to go into, go to my desktop and then so mine is saved to the desktop. So you need to go into this folder, movie poster 2.305 dev4, which is what we downloaded. Open that and then you need to go into plugins. So when you open this, yours is only going to have one Plex media interface. So this folder corresponds to this tab. So again, when you first open it, you're only going to have one tab of each of these. I've created multiple because, you know, I wanted it to read multiple devices. All you do is you right click and then you're going to copy and paste it or you hit copy. So let me let me hit this show more options and then copy and where's my paste there it is okay so when you copy it it's going to say plex media interface copy what you need to do is change that to the, like you see here plex media interface 2 same thing if you have another however many devices you want this thing to read then you need to create that many folders. If you have six devices that you want the software to be able to connect to, then you need to do Plex Media Interface 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You get the idea. So I'm going to delete this because I don't need that. So here you'll see I have 1, 2, 3, 4. Don't change this to 1. This is, this is 1 even though it's not in the actual, you know, title. That's how it is. Leave that one alone. When you make a copy, just change the next one to two, three, four. So you can see here I have one, two, three, four tabs. That's how you add multiple devices so that it'll see it. And then when you add each tab or once, once you do that, you'll have to close out of movie poster software reopen it and then you should see these tabs if you just leave it open you won't see those tabs yet you need to close it out reopen it and then for each tab you just go in there you type in the same server address the same port number and then you just select whichever device id that you want to add so if you have a roku then here you would add roku next tab if you have apple tv you would put whatever the name of your Apple TV is there and so on and so forth. All right, now that we have our movie poster set up, we have all our tabs, everything that we need to do to get it working, we need to reopen movie poster and then I'm gonna show you how you can cast the movie poster from your desktop to a Google Chromecast. So I'm gonna open up movie poster again. We're gonna let that boot up. All right, let's put it up. Chang Chi is up on the up on the poster. So now we need to go to Google Chrome. So if you don't have Chrome already, if you don't use it, just go ahead and download it because you're gonna. That's the only way that you're gonna be able to do this. So once you download Google Chrome, or if you already have it installed, we're gonna click on that, and then at the top, we're gonna click on these three little ellipses. And then we're going to go to cast. Now this is going to show you anything on your network that has Chromecast that you can cast to. So I have TV, I have a TV, I have an NVIDIA Shield, 
that I can cast to if I wanted to. But I'm not, we're not going to cast to that. I'm going to be using a Google Chromecast. So make sure that you're using a Google Chromecast. And then, and I guess if you have a TV that has Google Chromecast, you can actually just get a TV, or if you already have a TV, a spare TV, which I doubt most people have just lying around. But if you have a TV that has Google Chromecast built in, you don't even need a, a Chromecast, a physical Chromecast. You can just mount the TV and cast to it. So that's a good idea as well. I'm actually looking to looking into doing that in the future. But for now, I'm just using Google Chromecast. So what we need to do is we need to click on Sources, and then you need to make sure that you select Cast, cast Desktop not cast tab because it's going to cast the tab that's open in Chromecast and that's not going to work. So you got to make sure that you hit cast desktop. Once you select that, you're going to select your Google Chromecast or your Chromecast TV. Now, I haven't named I haven't named as guest room TV because it used to be in my guest room. I just haven't changed it, so that's why it says that. But this is my Chromecast. So I'm going to click this and then you're going to see it's going to start casting my desktop. Okay? So it's casting now. Now all you need to do is you need to go back to movie poster, right click, maximize, and you're done. Super, super easy. So the longest part is going to be setting up movie poster. And really if you're not setting up multiple tabs, it's not going to take very long at all. So very easy, very cost efficient way of getting movie poster on a mo on a TV or a monitor outside of your theater or inside of your theater if you don't want to plug a computer or laptop directly into the monitor.